Playing around with large language models with different prompts is fun. Installing them is also fun. But if you think about it, what's the utility? I mean, if I just have to ask an LLM weird questions and then just have a laugh or two, then what's the purpose of this artificial intelligence in the long run? Well, in this video, I will try to show you how you can use the Line AGI framework to build an actual production grade application by using large language model. I did a previous video on Line AGI and I showed um, the introduction as how to install it and how you can use an Line AGI in a simple application by using OpenAI's ChatGPT4 model. The good thing is that there are a lot of other frameworks which are popping up and if you don't want to use Line AGI, there is no issue. You can use any other framework or API in order to build an application around the large language models. But in this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a code developer or auto developer by using Line AGI, Llama Index, and also PyAutoGen. If you are not aware of what Line AGI is or Llama Index is, then please uh, watch my channel. I have done various videos on each one of them. Having said that, let's move on to the code side of things to show these things in action. The first thing you need to do is to install these three things, Line AGI, Llama Index, and PyAutoGen. Also, if you don't have it, also install OpenAI. I already have it, so I'm not installing it. I think I already have all of these things, but anyway, I'll just install them for the heck of it. Okay, PyAutoGen was not there, but rest of it is there, that is fine. Okay, so it is installing everything, that's done. Let me clear my screen. Now, this is done. Another prerequisite which you need to do is to make sure that you have OpenAI's API key. OpenAI's API key is very important because you would need a paid account at OpenAI and make sure that you keep an eye on your cost because not only you would have to pay 20 US dollar per month for OpenAI's key, but also there will be a cost of input and output tokens. And when you're building applications with ChatGPT4 or any OpenAI's API key, then this cost can blow up fairly quickly. So please keep an eye on your cost. I don't want to get any root bill shock from OpenAI. Anyway, so that is done. And now let's also check another thing if I have it, which is pathlib. I believe I have it, but I'm just uh, checking it. Okay, yeah. so, okay, no, it wasn't there. That is good. I already have installed Pathlib. So that is done. I have already set my OpenAI key in my environment variable, which is export OpenAI underscore API underscore key is equal to whatever your API key is. Now that's done. Now, another thing which we need to do is to set some of the a library so what i'm going to do uh, here is i'm going to create a directory or folder on my local system i will put some of the python code files just random python code files in that um, folder and then i will ask my auto developer to questions about those coding files with the help of line agi so that is the purpose of it so let me quickly create a folder so I have created the folders on my local system. Now, in order to show you this in action, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start up interactive session with Python so that you would see what exactly I'm doing. First, let me import some of the libraries which we are going to use. So I'm doing from pathlib and then I'm importing our line AGI. There you go. Now, first I'm going to give it an extension. So I'm saying, okay, I'm going to simply use extension as .py. These are simply the variables. And then I am going to go in the current directory and I already have this line AGI folder. And let's give it any name, auto dev line, and then also specify whatever your output directory is where if you want, this line AGI can also create new code for you. Cool. Now let's read these files with the help of our directory to um, files method through line AGI. So if you see this L, L dot I is the same one. This is a line AGI client, which we have done. Okay. You can see one log saved here in this directory. That is awesome. And now let's do the chunking. Chunking is the process of converting your token, large files into, uh, 
the chunks so that URL LM would be able to decipher them. And I'm just creating a chunks.csv file here. And you can see that because I only have one file in there. And let me actually show you that file if I have it somewhere. Okay, I'll show you the file. So this is a file I'm using as a source file. But I'll walk you through later. Okay, so that is done. Now let me also print as what exactly I have currently. So there you go. It says that there are in total 553 characters in one non-empty file. So as I said, I'm just using one file. Now let's create the content of it. I'm just calling it a lens. And this is the terminology I have got from the notebook provided by the line HGI. Okay, let's also grab some of the main max values so that we'll be able to compare them later and print them. That's done. And this is just a Pythonic way of doing it. I hope that you are aware of that. Okay, let me also take it above. So you can see that uh, this is the minimum length of file. Let me also print the max length of file. That is the max length of file. That is good. And now let me also grab the average length of the files. And sorry, I'm just doing it in the real time. So there, there's a lag. I don't want to make it a uh, clear and non-cut version. I just wanted to show you if there is any error. We will resolve, try to solve it in tandem. Okay, so that is done. As, as you can see, this file is pretty uniform and not uneven so which is okay and now once that's done you can also print it out for example what sort of chunking it has done let me see if it displays that so there is you go so you can see the chunks which we created earlier it create it has this uh, chunk you're a helpful assistant design this is all my code and if i show you the file which i have put it in the code file this it contains this uh, content which has been correctly chunked by our code okay cool nice okay that is done now let's also set up the llama index vector index because so this is a process if you know it first whatever input we provide to our large language model text is chunked or into the smaller pieces then numerical representations of those chunks are created or it is called as embedding and then that embedding is stored in in the vector data store for the rag or retrieval augmented generation so that is what we are going to do and for vector store or where we will be storing storing our embeddings we will be using the in memory vector store from llama index okay let me actually try to clear this so that you would be able to see what is happening let me also show you the way of importing uh, clearing the screen in windows in vs code this is Windows operating system, by the way, and I'm using Git Bash in it. So simply import OS and then define this Lambda function where we are doing a system call to the OS command CLS. And now simply type clear this and this is going to clear our screen. And you can now simply run clear this as many times as you want and it will clear our screen and make the uh, output much, much uh, decent. Okay, now let's create our vector store on our chunks so that we will store the embeddings. So I'm simply um, importing this service context and vector store index from llama index. So let's wait for it to load. Takes a bit of a time. Okay, now it gave us an error. Let me see what is happening here. Okay, I had to pause the video and after much tries, uh, I was able to fix it. The issue was that uh, I had to exit from here, interpreter. And then I had to do a pip install HTTPX and the version should be 0.25.1. And then I installed it and then I had to rerun the whole code again because interpreter loses all of the values. And then it was able to uh, run it. As you can see that vector store is now imported, thankfully. Okay, this is done. Let me clear my screen. And now let's import OpenAI. That is also done. And now import the text node because uh, nodes are where it stores the data and it uh, or the chunks. So let's build nodes from our existing chunks, which we already have put in for our file. So F contains the content and then let's 
call um, the no the, the lambda for the chunk content that is also done and now let's set up our vector index so as i mentioned earlier i already have set my openai's api key and i am using llm as gpt4 that is done now let's set up the service context this is i'm just using the default with this llm that is also done and now let's create our index this is our vector store index that is done sometimes it takes a bit of a time but we have a very small file and now let's set up our query engine for tree summarize because we'll be summarizing it and that is awesome now let's ask it um maybe for our what is or maybe i'll say what is the system prompt in the code let's see if it is able to see it or not and enter it and let me print the response of the model there you go so the system prompt in the code is you are a helpful assistant designed to perform calculations and you can see this is my code which we have chunked vectorized stored indexed and now we have curated it with the help of line agi awesome so you can see that it is working up till now which is awesome you can query anything about the code maybe i will ask it um so let me clear the screen and i'll ask it something to um a general question let's see if it is able to do that i'm asking it uh can you suggest any ideas to optimize this code let me print let me send it and now let's print it you can see it is taking a bit of a time because it is talking to that chat gpt4 at the moment so let's wait for it to come back because it is generating the response and all that stuff so let's wait for it to come back and then we will print the response shouldn't take too long it has come back let me print the response there you go amazing stuff you can see there are so many things for example it says reuse a session object <clears throat> asynchronous context manager manager because i'm not using it it is suggesting me to use it so and you can see there are a lot of heaps of suggestions about testing cleanup and all that stuff uh, and it is suggesting us that if you implement these suggestions code will be more robust maintainable and potentially more efficient amazing let's suppose i am not a python uh, developer so and i want to ask it what uh, exactly is this uh, async io so i'm going to ask it in a rude way what in the hell is async io in this code and let me print it and my apologies if anyone got to find it but i'm just trying to test out the model here so let's see what model says there you go okay model hasn't complained like a good boy it is just saying async i was a python module that uh, blah 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 what it does and amazing stuff and then not only that but just look at this in the context of the provided code async io is used to run the main function which is an asynchronous function allowing to manage a synchronous task defined in the line agi model amazing stuff that is what i'm doing so if you go down in the main function i'm calling this async io which in return is going above in this function and calling this line agi stuff amazing because this is a waiting here for the calculator and in the calculator we are doing the line agi stuff so not only it has given us uh, the answer but it has expanded on it what exactly um, that thing is doing so you can see that how cool is that and how powerful is that that you can uh, do a lot of coding assistant and you can even build your own code assistant with this thing so this is it guys for this video as i mentioned with line agi i'm i have just scratched the surface here you can build your own um code generator 
not only we can simply ask it to check our code and answer the questions about it we can even ask it to generate more code out of our own code or as you already saw we can ask for op the optimizations and we can even ask it to rewrite it and chat gpt would do it there is another tool with chat gpt code interpreter which you can use with line agi and in the future video i'm also going to show you that so stay tuned and if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel thank you very much